Well, there was a conversation that came across a little while ago and it got me really thinking on things. Yes, I've dove into the furry fandom. Yes, uh, oh my God, oh no, I'm seeing myself as an avatar. I'm doing something more with my life that actually is inspiring and makes me happy. You know, it's, uh, I've taken a step back away from things that kept me in a cage and the cage was opened up and the bird is now free to think his mind and to think things through and to have that look that's larger than life and something that is just soaring above and seeing the greater perspective on a lot of things. This is something that I surly was missing and wasn't listening to or paying attention to in my own sense. Yes, when we started the channel and when I started this channel now, like eight years ago, really pushing out content, live streaming Legend of Zelda and Magic the Gathering Arena, did I have the sense that this was going to turn into something more? I, I took the line, I am your proud Canadian Phoenix, and that's what I kind of rolled with. And I've had people tell me that I should drop that in the past. And I sat there and went, why? It, it felt natural and it felt like a catch line. It felt like something more. And now, you know, I had people even telling me, oh, you're going to get mistaken for a furry. Is that really a bad thing? I've been called everything else under the sun. What, what's one more thing at this point? Um, I could care less. I put out content and if you're here to listen to it, thank you. Uh, if you want to be part of it, thank you. If you don't, it's easy enough you move on. There's so many, uh, so much more content out there on the platform. It doesn't matter at this point. I do this as a hobby more than anything. But it has been pointed out, avian furries are not seen in the best of light. Uh, some people think birds are annoying. Uh, I get that because some birds are very annoying. They, 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 they can peck your eyes out. They can do all sorts of things. I'm not going to do that, obviously. I more use this as a medium than anything. And it's a lot of fun in that sense. But when you go and look at like a convention, when you go into a, that space, you don't find a lot of Phoenix art or a lot of bird art in that sense. You'll find the odd owl here and there, but you won't find a lot of it out there. And that's part of the issue, I think, is it's not as popular. It's not as easy to draw either. Drawing a beak and a perspective that makes it look real and makes it look welcoming is not something that's easy to do. And let's take a look at this. You know, VR world, I get to be a bird. I get to float above the heavens. I find the highest peak possible looking down at everything. I, I you know, some of the things that I first did in here, I would get the higher view on everyone that was around for some of the community events that I took a part in. That is where I felt natural, where it felt right. Now, avians, they're a very unique type. And in that sense, I've gone with what's called a griffin model in that sense. And it's more of the legendary aspect of the phoenix. It's something that I've been drawn to all my life and it's something that has been encapsulated around my life. So because of that, it just made sense for me, for me personally. Where does that put this channel? Where does that put me in the grand scheme of things? Well, Obviously, I've done a bunch of stuff and I've used the Phoenix motif for a lot of the stuff, which seems to be something that isn't sought out. You don't generally see someone looking up a search term of the best Phoenix on, on YouTube or the best Phoenix on Twitch. You don't see that type of thing. You have people that look up video games and that's, for me, where my passion is, is in video games. I love video games. I'm absolutely in love with Beat Saber right now. I think it's one of the better better games when it comes to VR. I, I do want to play Help Wanted, but we ran into our snags for that, so that's something else. But when it comes to an avian species, there's not a ton out there, but there's much more of them out there than people do realize. Recently, I've come to learn that there's a few out there that went this route in content creation. They tried this route. There's a couple, not going to name names. There's a couple that have <laughs> dove down some very, very dark paths in that as well. And it's the ever evolving scenario in that sense. For me, I've always been evolving. I've always done something more when it comes to content creation. I've always done something more in that sense, trying to be larger than life. Once again, I'm bringing that up. But avians 
or as a fursona. Like, this is something that never crossed my mind until a few months ago. It never really crossed my mind to do something more in this in a space like this as a creature. <laughs> Merchandising, of course, you know, that's one thing. When I started doing all the drawings, that was one one of my things was like, there isn't enough merchandise or drawings of avian fursonas or furries or just avian creatures out there. Yeah, there's people that'll sit there and get beautiful snapshots of eagles, owls, all those things, but you don't just see it. You have to seek it out. And that has been, when it comes to a search term, when it comes to algorithmic standards, of course that puts you lower in the algorithm because it's not something that's widely looked at. But I think I have something very unique here, and that's the difference. Uniqueness for myself, and I know for a lot of others, that uniqueness will stand way taller. And that's where I'm going to be. I'm going to stand here. I'm going to stay as unique as possible. Do I? Does that mean I turn around and re-envision myself? Do I redo the channel? Well, I don't know. I have set up a second channel, but I haven't really told a lot of people about it. I do have a second channel that I've set up on YouTube that I've, uh, I've named Mythical Phoenix Productions. Why? That, that's what I use for my, my business side of things. That's what I use as that entity. So is this something that I turn around and push a little bit more? Do I say, hey, listen, go follow the Mythical Phoenix Production channel because maybe sometime soon I will put up a few videos there instead of here to try and grow something more. I'm not entirely sure where I want to go with that. What I know is the, the, the entity that you see in front of you as Cinder Shadow, that's not going anywhere. Nowhere is that going. Cinder Shadow has been my namesake for a very long time. And I'm not going to give that up because at the same time we have raised so much money for charity. We have done so much good in and around communities and because of that i'm not giving any of that up i've got over a thousand videos on this channel like there's no way i'm going to give that up but maybe it just becomes something more and maybe it evolves into something more and that's where i sat there and I, I took a step back i've been thinking about this for a very long time a very long time a much longer than the the persona was born in that sense it was it, it, i've looked at my channel for a very long time i've looked at what i've done here on youtube i've looked at everything like that you know i'm moving over to twitch for live streams i feel a little bit more welcomed there than i do in youtube standards i still want to live stream on youtube but they they're probably going to be way more down to earth way more chill streams than anything maybe if i get into a sense where i sit there and draw but the, the VR stuff, that's staying on Twitch. I have to keep that on Twitch. Uh, not because YouTube or Twitch as platforms go, but in an algorithm standard, the, the VR stuff just doesn't do well on, on, on YouTube because YouTube is fueled by search terms. And those search terms don't push that forward. One of the things as a search term when it comes to content creation is furry, right? I see a lot of that search term being used in the last little while. It's, be it's becoming a much more popular thing. But then you break it down and you go, oh, okay, furry. Then you have your wolves and your dogs and your cats. The everyone loves those. But then you get into a little bit more niche topics. And that's the problem is finding your niche has always been a scenario when it came to YouTube is finding a niche. And obviously I'm a gamer. That has been my thing, my passion for a long time. When it comes to finding a different niche, I was like, well, why don't I just dive into all of this? The VR stuff is absolutely incredible and I thank everyone around the channel for that because if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be diving into this and exploring something that sorely, sorely I was missing in my life. And I have, from the bottom of my heart, it really does mean the world to me in that sense. I, I, I don't know where I would be without it. Now, obviously in fantasy and medieval stuff, you have knights and dragons and you have all sorts of the perceptions that get m bigger than life. Well, a phoenix or a griffin, they're bigger than life, 
but they're not as as sought out. Featherites or avians, they they get the the crap end of the stick, unfortunately, when it comes to a search algorithm. They're not searched out that much. So, if you want to do me a solid, if you want to help along just the community as a whole when it comes to avians and all this other stuff if you're an artist if you have any inkling to be to have some sort of artwork with that just to have that start posting it start drawing it start promoting it a little bit more and maybe maybe one day instead of it being the one percent of the furry population maybe it'll be two percent of the furry population <laughs> anyway i'm gonna sign off here i am your proud canadian phoenix in a shadow have yourselves a great day don't forget to like and subscribe and i will see you again very 